Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had the chance to pick up some nice lunch, all energized, not at all sleepy, I hope, because uh, we have a fantastic session awaiting you. We have the celebrity keynote, which I'm sure all of you have been waiting for. I have been personally waiting for it because I'm actually speechless because one of my favorite, favorite sportsmen, Indian sportsmen, for me, favorite sportsman ever is in the room. I am not joking, Mr. Srinath. The reason why I started watching cricket was because of you. I have always followed your career. And it, and I'm actually blessed by the fact that I have the opportunity to say this to you. So thank you so much from all of us. And I'm sure India is blessed that you were part of the Indian cricket team. With no further delay to introduce our speaker and introduce the session, may I call upon on stage our superstar, Mr. Keshav Murugesh, the chair of BPM Council and CEO of WNS. Keshav, the stage is all yours. Thank you so much. You've already stolen my thunder. <laughs> so everyone, you know, I know over the last day and a half, we've had some really interesting sessions and it's very heartening to see that, that right at the end of this entire wonderful event, we still have a full house. I know that all of it is essentially because you're all waiting to see who this superstar speaker is. And you've seen him enter the room. But we have a very, very special guest with us this afternoon to fire us all up with high energy and enthusiasm. He is one of India's finest former fast bowlers, but when you see him, you can't say former. He could still you know, bowl very well, I'm sure. And the current ICC match referee. He is the only Indian fast bowler to have taken more than 300 wickets in one day internationals. A feat par excellence, despite the seasons changing and the years going by. Despite all his laurels, I must also mention that he is an inspiration in how calm and unassuming he still remains. Mysuru Express is what they say. Can I please have the honor of welcoming you on stage, Javagal Srinath? And please put your hands together for the superstar. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank Just you. sit down. I'm going to introduce you. Thank you. Javagal, welcome to this high impact event. We are delighted to have you, and in fact, incredibly proud to have amongst our midst someone who made India so proud on the international sporting arena. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've all known him as a sports person, but let me surprise you all by mentioning he is also a technology geek like all of you. We're going to learn more about that aspect this afternoon. This is not an aspect of his sport that, his, that he has not transformed. So this is one more area, excellence, passion, dedication, and unwavering track record. He has carried them with him all the time. For 12 years, he held sway in the international arena of the sport that most of us breathe, eat, and live in this country. He has won hearts with his excellence and sportsmanship at play. He has commented on the sport as an acknowledged authority. He has administered the sport in this state with a no-nonsense efficiency 
and continues to refer it, uh, referee it on the global arena. Before I formally welcome uh, Javagal Srinath, I, call, I will call him Javagal sometimes, Srinath sometimes, because we're all used to that from, from TV. Here is an opportunity to have an interactive brush with a lesser known fact about him. Let me throw this quiz at all of you and test your knowledge. How many of you know his basic qualification? Unfair, you researched it. Someone there? Okay, great. Do you know his specialization? <laughs> oh, Pejawar, you're a smart guy. Yeah, yeah, he's done a lot of research. <laughs> Absolutely, instrumentation from the SJCE. Ah, in, in Mysuru. So, well done, very well done, but no prizes yet. <laughs> well, no wonder he can bring so much of science and logic into the game. I would like to mention a few credentials about Srinath before handing over the mic to him. He made his entry into international cricket with his one-day international debut at Sharjah in October 1991. His test debut came a month later against Australia at the Gabba at Brisbane with an impressive 3 for 59 haul. In his first year donning the India cap, he was named Indian Cricketer of the Year. A bowler for all seasons and all types of pitches. This is a unanimous verdict on Srinath. He is a recipient of the prestigious Arjuna Award by the government of India. As a fast bowler, he is India's highest wicket taker in ODIs with 314 wickets. Come on, guys. <laughs> he ties with Zaheer Khan as India's highest wicket taker in World Cups with 44 wickets. In Test cricket, he stands second to Kapil Dev in pace bowling with 236 scalps. Described as a chaotic entertainer with the bat, he has been involved in a fair number of rescue missions for India. Cricket fans, do you remember the thrilling win he fashioned with a 52-run partnership with his buddy Anil Kumble in the Titan Cup semi-final against Australia. Do you? <laughs> Srinath announced his retirement from test and first-class cricket after the home series against the West Indies in 2002. But he acceded to his captain Saurav Ganguly's request to play in ODIs at least until the World Cup in 2003. His involvement with the game continues to this day. He is a commentator known for his gentle but incisive narration. He keenly involves himself with the MRF Pace Foundation to develop Indian pace bowling and has inspired many a youngster to carry out their dreams through his coaching. He teamed up with Anil Kumble as secretary of the KSCA, the Karnataka State Cricket Association, to expand the game to cities and towns outside of Bangalore, he has and continues to inject technology into the game to improve outcomes for players and for the different aspects of the sport. He is a member of the ICC Match Referee Panel since 2006. I'm sure you're eager to listen to Srinath speak. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over the mic to him Srinath, the floor is all yours. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Keshav. I think that was a good data mining done. Um, and you know, he was insistent on having a quiz with you people about my engineering degree. So now I will talk about a bit of technology which we introduced uh, into the Indian cricket. <clears throat> but before that, let me tell you my background even further. It was nice to know whether you Googled, whether you knew, it's all the same. I have done a lot of engineering. Meaning, it's not a small four-year degree. It's an eight-year degree. <laughs> so you must know this. So I know a lot of engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I have done research in engineering. So 
you, you've got to be very careful when you cross-question me with technology and the, uh, and the insights of technology, I will come up with a good answer, so <laughs> better not ask. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, although the invite came in the last minute, but anyway, I think this is a great platform. I think uh, you all share a common interest. Um, and for me, you know, cricket was a hobby which became a profession. Now technology became a hobby a little later in my life. <laughs> um, I just want to tell you about how technology has made a difference to all of our lives, and then sport is uh, no different. Just to give you a background about what was Indian cricket team then and what, was, what is Indian cricket team now. In 19, as soon as I got into the Indian cricket team, and up until 1995-96, you know, we used to have a decent time, we used to win a few games, we used to lose some games. Now, being the junior most in that team then, during the team meetings, if we lose the match, generally, you know, people, the seniors pinpointed us and said, look, you got to gear up, you got to do something good, you got to, you know, do really well. I think it happens in every company, I suppose. <laughs> Just ask questions. There was no method. There was no uh, proper feedback mechanism. So we struggled a lot to understand where we went wrong. The best what they could do is give us a cassette of the match. And those days, you saw, I mean, it's not those DVDs. It's about those, uh, you know, the, those massive cassettes, uh, video, video cassettes. And uh, one of the coaches came to me and said, look, I have gone this far now. You watch yourself. We used to go fast forward, stop, fast forward, stop, fast forward, and by the time you know you wanted to see that footage, it would be early morning because you would have slept with the. You know that was so laborious. You could not have gone to that particular picture what you wanted to watch. So that was basically a linear axis of f pictures. You see, I mean, it used to go one pretty fast forward. Didn't really serve the purpose. Way back in '96 when we toured South Africa for the uh, second time. We saw Bob Bulmer with the laptop. And you know Bob Bulmer, right? The guy who passed away, who um, uh, was a Pakistan uh, coach. He was with a laptop. In talking about 96, even laptop was a big thing for us. And we used to go and stand next to him and see, what is he doing with this laptop? He was a nice man. You know, he, was, he didn't hold back his secrets. He said, this is exactly what we do. He had an Excel sheet, and he had various columns. And he had the batsman name, the bowler name, the type of delivery. He used to watch the match on the television. He used to key in the type of delivery. And he used to say whether the batsman was comfortable or not, whether he scored runs or not. And then he used to add, you know, key in five or six attributes like this and uh, go to the next ball. Whenever the batsman was not comfortable, uh, he used to kind of tick mark that particular box and move forward. So by the end of the day, he used to just sort those columns and then say, OK, if you pitch just short of length for Sachin Tandulkar, he's not very comfortable there. And then he, that is how, you know, it's on an Excel sheet, just on an Excel sheet. And this is how he started, uh, you know, analyzing. So this became, and when he showed this to me, I mean, it was so interesting. Even that kind of feedback is so important for us to go back and then bowl those line and lengths. You know, I mean, from the bowling point of view, it made tremendous uh, difference to us. So India being pioneers in software, we came back in 97, we went around, we searched, I got injured, so I had an off uh, for six months. That's the time I wrote my engineering, three more subjects, finished it. <laughs> <laughs> so I started in 87, finished in 97, <laughs> 10 years. Chemical sounds like a, sounds like a CA degree. <laughs> more than that. <laughs> I think my friends used to go and pay the fees every time and he, I think I got to get him at least two pairs of chapels because it's all gone, <laughs> paying the fees all the time. And I never used to go to the exams. Um, so basically, you know, I came back and then my friends who had finished in four years, they went to US, they came back. Uh, they were working in a company called Global Phoenix Solutions and then I approached them and I said, look, we want something. I mean, this is going nowhere. Our careers are all at stake. We cannot play this game 
so blindfoldedly because we just go and bowl. We don't know what we are doing. We need some kind of feedback. Look, this is exactly what they are doing. And even we ask, I mean, there was no laptops in India then, honestly. And then we approached this company where my friends were working and they said, there was one guy called Mohan Das. He's working for Google now. Now he said, I think this is possible. So this company took it up. And in eight months time, they made a video of it. So basically, it is the tool what you use now. You see, uh, when the cricket match is going on, you have a couple of people uh, keying in. Now, there was no laptop, so we had to build a, a system on our own. So we found a company called Shong Technologies, and they built a system. Picture cards used to be this big. Now you get it in a chip. And then uh, five, 512 uh, MB RAM was one big uh, you know, PCB, used to come on a PCB board. And then picture card used to come from uh, Israel, called a company called OptiBase. It was not available in India at all. So we got everything, and then we had some fantastic engineers who put together, took it as a challenge, and then did it. Now the challenge was to convince my team that we need this. The first thing when you go and tell people that, look, we have technology, we can use it. The first idea, what can technology tell us? What, what will compute tell me how to bat or how to bowl? Now that again, I mean, there was an effort to convince all the team members that how this is going to be used. If you really read Sachin, probably three years ago, he said that because of technology, it enhanced my career for at least a uh, couple of years. Now that's how uh, technology has taken over. So finally, this tool came into existence. It was one of those ugly boxes, you know, which we made. And all of a sudden, it used to be blue. The screen used to be blue, um, again, rebooted. And then it used to heat up so much, we used to put a massive fan behind it. And somehow or the other, we wanted to finally have a uh, good presentation uh, on the inauguration of the tool uh, with the board. And board, we had all kinds of people then who had absolutely no idea about this technology. Somehow or the other, we had convinced them to accept it. So it was accepted. Then finally, I went to Mr. Narayan Murthy, who was in the same neighborhood. Uh, our Infosys is Narayan Murthy, and I said, sir, this is what we have done. And that man was so thrilled to say uh, that, you know, this tool is very effective. This has to be used. This is the way we need to move forward. And he asked me whether any of the team in the world has this tool. I said, sir, nobody has this. So this is the only tool which is available now. So he finally, in the PPT, what we made on that day, on the launch, he gave us a four-liner. Now, why that four-liner was so important, so that nobody makes any comment, nasty comment on the tool. If Narayan Muthi endorses it, the whole world kept quiet, especially the board, our own board members. So um, finally, so what this tool did, uh, I will give you a quick uh, brief on this tool. I mean, which is, it is the same. What we did then is the same core code which is still running. Basically, when the bowler starts running, you say start video. And when the event is over, which means he has scored a boundary, whether he has scored a four, whatever it is, then the ball ends. So then you say stop video, so that video clipping is uh, uh, recorded. Now you add attributes to it, five or six attributes, off, outside the off stump, or uh, you know, cover drive, uh, whether the batsman is comfortable, uh, run score if you want to, uh, all those, whatever that you want as a coach want, you can customize it. Now this is attached, these attributes are attached to the video clip and is to, it, it is stored in the database. And we used to use Oracle 8i a long time back. And say, for example, in a ODI, you have around uh, 600 balls plus another 10 wise no balls. So 610 balls sits in the database. Now, by the end of the day, you have a query screen. And then you say that, show me all the balls where Kumble bowled down the leg side, which he hardly bowled, but still. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so we used to get those pictures one after the other. Now, that made our meetings more meaningful. Now, the best part was, Comparison. We had a split screen, which you see now in normal television uh, broadcast. So we had split screen where you spit, put your best pictures when you're really bowling well, and then you put your pictures now because the camera angles are all the same. So you could easily make out where you are going wrong. So that analysis really opened up uh, the minds of all the players. So initially, even Sachin was reluctant. He said, well, do I really need this? It, I don't need to see anything of that. But you know, I used to sell it so hard within the team that you got to see this. At some stage, you will see it. Slowly, 
and steadily people started looking into it. Now, every team meeting, there is, if there is no technician, then there is no team meetings. So that's how technology, you need to know what you're doing. This game is all about cognitive. What you see is what you learn. And no amount of words from anyone, how descriptive he is, or how narrative he is, cannot explain. You know, coaching or even explaining sport is such a complicated stuff. I used to go to MRF, I'm sure you, you people know. Dennis Lilly used to come. And then um, um, we used to listen to him. This Australian accent used to be tough for some of us. Yo, might and, you know, that typical Aussie thick accent. I mean, it's very hard to understand. Now, whatever he said, now that has to go to your motor learning skills. Now that, the brain will process it, and then that should become your bodily motions. Now that's a very complicated process. First of all, have I understood his language well? Even if that is wrong, then what, whatever that goes in is wrong, simple. So, you know, I still, um, uh, you know, there was one, Ashish Winston Zaidi, who used to play with us from UP. Um, so Dennis gave a good 10 minutes lecture, all of us, about the fitness and all those things. So everybody, he's from UP, and we are all listening. And uh, so I said, Zaidi, samaj mein aaya. Main to ha bol diya ji bas. No. So imagine, so coaching is so difficult. I mean, words cannot. I mean, pictures can definitely make a big difference. So these pictures, uh, what we call non-linear axis of pictures, what you want, you just pick it up. So the bowlers want these kind of pictures. He wants to see himself. More than anything else, I mean, how did the opponents bowl? Where do they bowl? How do they bowl? So that gave us more meaning into what coaching was all about. So this is the tool which is still existing, and now if you see throughout the world, everybody use it. Even, I think, those days, Hansi Crony came to see what this tool was all about. The, the New Zealand team wanted to come and see what it was. Now, once you get the concept right, then you can go back and get your own tool done. Uh, so that was one of the products. You know, India is more about service, but I think products still have a place. So <laughs> if, if technology, I believe, is if it is related to the human space where it is really required, I think it can still play a big role. So, so this is the tool what we introduced with uh, great uh, you know, passion. And I'm glad that uh, that same tool is uh, uh, you know, used today. Now going further, you know, what made, uh, coming back to this, my, my own job of match refereeing, if you, you would have seen you know, on television a lot of, uh, you have DRS, a lot of discussions on DRS, third umpires making most of the decisions. Um, you know, there is, again, a debatable ones as well. But however, if you see from 91, when you used to use, watch Sharjah games, all right? The cameras used to be far away. Like before decision was made, the batsman walked. Of course, he was sulking. We couldn't even see who the batsman was. That was the quality of the camera, but technology has evolved tremendously. Now, you will see what is happening next to the pad of the uh, batsman. You can see the revolutions of the ball in slow motion. So the frames per second has improved tremendously. We have now 1,000 frames per second. So every detail, uh, every detail is captured. No detail, I mean, all details, uh, you know, it comes in handy. Now, with what happened actually when, when technology uh, beats human capability? Now, humans cannot see what is happening right at the foot of the batsman when you stand as an umpire. So, when there is a leg before decision, whether the ball pitched just outside the off stump or just down the leg side, I think human, you can make a calculated guess, but I think technology can be a little more accurate. I think the frames per second has changed our lives today. If there is no slow motion, you cannot watch television, honestly. So that real-time slow motion is the one which has really changed broadcasting today. So what happened actually, we, the umpires felt the pressure that you know, the whole world knows that you know, umpire has committed a blunder, but the umpire. Umpire is standing tall, he thinks that he has given the best decision, but the spectators know that he, you know, he has made a, a blunder. And 
compared to 91, when umpire made, made a mistake, there was no way that we could have caught that one clearly. But now you can. So therefore, that put pressure on ICC to bring in technology. It could be the runouts, it could be the leg befores, it could be their caught behinds, it could be, I think now it has come to a stage where you have hotspot, you have snickometers, you have all those things. Even then, mistakes do happen. Even then, I think technology can be 99% correct. So you use technology uh, as a slave, not as a master. So the umpire's gut feeling is still this, uh, uh, you know, is the primary aspect, and then comes the technology. So when it's like, you know, you see something, you cannot, you wear your glass and see. So that's the technology. So that's exactly how technology is being aligned. Now DRS, we are talking about DRS. Now what is happening with DRS? Um, you know, it's, it's the way we track the ball, the predictability path. The best thing that has been done is that, um, you know, I don't know, your, your, your company probably, you, you know, you've been in this business, you'll understand this better. There's only one company like Hawkeye Communication, Hawkeye used to, uh, you know, come up with this uh, ball predictive path then who sets the standards for them? They have their own standards. Whether it is right or wrong, we don't know. The only way it used to uh, uh, align with the game was because both the teams will have the same advantage or the disadvantage if it has. The next level was that there was another company which has come now, Virtual Eye. And then there is another one called Eagle Eye. Now all of them put together. Now if you have all these three technologies for ball tracking, is he out in Hawkeye? Is he out in, <laughs> you know, then there can be an issue, right? Whether each of them can produce the same data by the end of the day. That's the challenge. So what ICC has done now is they have given it this for MIT, uh, for a technical auditing, and there they are setting standards now. So anybody who, manu who comes up with this concept of ball tracking should meet those standards, minimum standards set up by MIT. So now in that case, I think this is more fair and stuff. So, you know, uh, Hawkeye or Eagle, Eagle Eye or whichever eyes, I think they, they seem to be more. So now these guys are working harder to make sure that they meet these standards. So technology will be here for, for good and it will definitely, uh, you know, uh, stay for long and bring more transparency, more accuracy for the decisions, um, you know, Players' career are at stake when you make wrong decisions, right? I mean, now, up until 91, it was not a profession. Now, it becomes a profession for players. So I have a small clipping I want to play. What happens in a third umpire's room with all these technologies? You just get to know the decision, right? But what happens in a third umpire's room is I want you people to see. Can we have the video, please? Rich, Rich. Copy, Ox. Okay, AJ, review for LBW. Three. Take that back one, please, uh, George. Okay, Ox, we have no bat involved. We're just going to wait now for Hawkeye, please. And mix to Hawkeye. Stand by three. Okay, Ox, pitching outside off stump. On-field call, hitting the wickets. And you can stay with your decision, mate. There he is. You're now on camera, Ox. Well done, fella. This is how decision is Thanks made. Thanks again, AJ. Sure? If you see that screen on the far corner, now that has become a touch screen. So you don't have to speak to the director anymore. You just have to go there, touch it, and then go forward or backward. So that will also save time in terms of decision making. So this is where going. Now the next question is, do you really require a third umpire? Now it's not about, it's still the human element at the top. When it is 50-50, I think the system should not make the decision. It's the humans who should make the decision. So therefore third umpire will never go into extension. They will always be there. And it is important that we blend technology and human aspect together uh, to make it a, an entertaining. So if, you, if it is there, then it becomes a video game more or less. Uh, that's how I would see. So this is how technology has been used and I think the future, now what holds, uh, what, you know, what, what is technology, how is it going to um, pan out in the future? Um, you know, we are looking at, you know, big data and all these things. The amount of such clips, what I said, now every Ranji Trophy team 
as an analyst. All right, so we play close to around 700 Ranji Trophy games or maybe more on, the, on all the ODI games. So imagine all those clips, if they are stored in a server somewhere. The same kind of uh, first class cricket you have in England. I mean, imagine every ball is stored and archived uh, in a server. So is South Africa, so is um, Pakistan or Sri Lanka. Everybody does that. These Every first class match, under 19 games are now captured, archived. Now tomorrow I am an IPL owner and I want to pick the best left arm spinner who gets five wickets. I get a notice on my system saying that, okay, there is a game happening in England. Now there is a left arm spinner who got a five wicket haul. So I want to see his clipping. So I go down to the law, I go on, go on to the system, look into you know, how he has bowled, what kind of bowler is he, whether my team wants him or not. You know, this is how I think, uh, you know, it will go at least uh, in the next five, six years. So uh, analytics is, will be very crucial. Uh, only thing is, I think all the countries should come together to put this on the cloud somewhere and probably get this information back. So this is where we stand at this point in time. And uh, any questions on this one? You, you can probably go ahead and ask. Uh, let's, let's do the questions a little later. Okay, hold on to your questions. Yeah, sir. because we... We have uh, lots more questions which will cover all of this, but we'll give enough time to the audience, uh, Javagal. This is my understanding of technology. Um, and also I would say, proudly say that my contribution of technology uh, to the sport. So, <clears throat> I used to be very humble in my good old days. No, no, it's okay, I didn't do that. But now I say, no, I, I think I, I need to be a little more firm in what I have done. And I take pride in saying that. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> what a lovely, you know, start to this, uh, you know, to the next uh, part of the session. Because all this while, you know, Javagal, you've been used to bowling bouncers or others. Now it is the turn of the BPM, you know, group to bowl some bouncers at you. So I, I hope you have a helmet somewhere. Uh, you don't, don't look like you're very well prepared for it, but we have uh, some really good questions for you. First bouncer. So you are a specialist engineer in, you know, instrumentation technology is what you said. And uh, you also spoke about how much of time you spent on that degree, which yeah. is very impressive. So there must have been a dream, you know, there too, right? So had international cricket not outpaced the technology geek, where do you think you would have landed up? I would have been sitting somewhere here amongst you people, listening to somebody else. <laughs> You mean one of the technology see, visionaries? <laughs> good, good see, answer. No, no, you see, you know, coming from a typical middle class family, I mean, what else do you want? I mean, the parents want you to do a degree. Now, whether I liked engineering or not is different. They just, my parents wanted me to become an engineer. And I will tell you honestly, Mysore, in Mysore, there is, uh, you know, you, um, most of you know JC in Mysore. Okay, we grew up, and all my, my brother used to study there, and the entire road was talking about JC. It was that, you know, when you are in first PUC, second PUC, it's all about JC, JC. I don't know, even if they had law, I would have joined it, I think. <laughs> so it was the college which I wanted to go. It was the, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, the style. It, I was so impressed with that. So no matter what they did, I wanted to be in JC. I think that was probably my focus of engineering. <laughs> That's exactly what we are doing. We are also trying to convert everyone in India into business process management people for the future. Exactly. And that's our rebranding effort that we are also doing here. So the, you know, the GABA ground in yep. Brisbane, it's uh, not a killer pitch for sure, but certainly one known for bounce and firmness. And you yep. probably really enjoyed yourself there. As you marked your paces, you know, to come in to bowl, how did it feel, especially with Kapil Dev also around as a benchmark, so to speak. Describe that day for us when you, when you first bowled there. What were the feelings See, that went through your head? It's a very impressionable phase of my life where, you know, you want to just impress every ball. You just want to get a wicket every ball. Now, these are the things uh, we lacked in terms of uh, guidance, in terms of uh, fostering us, in terms of mentoring us. I think, you know, the Indian way, not now, I'm talking about then, was that, you know, you have to come through a hard way. You know, you learn your own trades, you learn your own tricks. You know, nobody feeds you because, you know, you should work hard, you should come up. 
but I think the professional world has changed in Australia. Australia used to spoon feed the f initially. They used to do the spoon feeding initially. This is exactly what you need to do. Imran Khan used to do it standing in mid on, mid off. But the philosophy of teaching is different from different people. I miss that. Maybe I was not smart enough to do it on my own. I could have done better if uh, I could, uh, if I had proper guidance there. Now again, guidance is a very subjective word. There are information. Did I go and fetch it? Maybe not. I, I might probably at this point in time, I can see myself go back say 25 years and then see, well, I think I didn't have the capabilities to seek the right kind of questions from the right people. I should have done that. There are two parts to it. One is that, did I go and seek the right kind of information? Or at that point in time, the culture was you wait for people to come and tell you what to do. So probably I was caught between the two. And I think people didn't come to me that much. I didn't go and seek information. So there is a balance here. But you had a natural advantage. Look at your height. You're almost seven feet tall. I think. Right? And, uh, and you, you know, had the build as well. So whereas you may not have had the kind of inputs that today you are giving other people, you had some advantages, right? Uh, the only advantage was used by my mother to put everything on top of the <laughs> altar and so that. that was a straight advantage. But in cricket, I think it is. <laughs> in cricket, I think uh, you know, uh, you know, th this is exactly what we mean. You know, when when you start, when you kick in as a cricketer, your fundamentals of learnings has to be very strong how you capture information, how you understand yourself. Now that should come half from guidance. I think that trigger comes from when somebody guides you in the right direction. I think that's very crucial. I mean, if, if that had happened to me, I mean, that, I mean I'm only now being very um, cynical in a way that I couldn't do better then. Now, even now, if you see, I mean, I could have done a lot better. Now, when I see why didn't I do very well when I started, when my career started, I mean, I, I, I'm a very huge critic of myself. I mean, sometimes I go overboard, but uh, that's the way to be, I think. That has worked well for me in many ways. Um, I, I still believe that's the reason why I wanted Zaheer to do well. I went to Zaheer or Rashish or these guys. I gave them enough information. I said, this is exactly what you need to be doing. This is how you should be uh, taking care of yourself. This is the line and lens what you need to bowl. Because I felt that information was very crucial, which I didn't get then. That is one part. The other part is I didn't seek properly. I will have to give both sides of the coin. So I went out of my way to help my fast bowlers because I always realize if you have three or four good fast bowlers in tandem, the team is always looking good. Otherwise, two bowlers bowl lots and you're tired. Then there's no energy in you. Fast bowling is all about conservation of energy, how you share amongst two or three fast bowlers within the team. And therefore, uh, you know, I think my career was probably, I, I, sometimes I feel that, you know, Zaheer graduated quickly, so is Ashish. And these guys, you know, in a year or uh, a year and a half, they were able to, you know, pitch the ball in the right areas all the time. I think it's all about guidance. Of course, technology, where, you know, when you show them on the technology, I mean, on the, on the screen, where to pitch the ball, it becomes easier. That's a hallmark of a great leader, as we all know. You know, all the time looking at self-improvement. Look at the man. He's even now talking about what more he could have done or should do. Next life, he will do it, right? That reminds me of something very I will be a batsman in the next <laughs> life. I don't want to be a batsman. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of an excellent story of one of the great architects. Some of you may have heard it, Frank Lloyd Wright. You know, at the age of 93, he was one of the best, greatest architects of the world. When someone went to him and said, which is your best project ever? He just looked up and said, the one I'm working on now. <laughs> That's it. That's, you know, a hallmark of a true leader. So guys, for all of you, what was the fastest ball that this gentleman, you know, bowled? Do you know what, what at what speed? Yeah? One? Kam kar diya apne, yeah. Kam, yeah, both kam kar diya. Sorry, 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 not allowed. Now this side. 149.6, completely wrong. One fifty-six during 1996 tour of South Africa. Come on, guys. You all are sitting with Google in front of you. You don't know it. You know, as they say, ekat ball chale gaya just. 
So, uh, Jamakal, in an earlier interview, you said your ODI bowling influenced your just short of good length, you know, kind of run up or, 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 or bowling length. And you felt you should have got it earlier, got out of it earlier. You have not actually played the T20 format, right, at this point in time. What do you think of that format as a format itself? T20 uh, is a format which came because of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, every game evolves, okay, from the ODI to the, uh, from the test to the ODIs. Uh, to the T20s. I think it is more about, you know, the, the globalization. I mean, it is more about the, 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 the economic uh, growth in India. Uh, people got busy, right? People got busy. At the same time, I think corporates have more money now. And what happened was that, you know, if, you, if it is ODIs, I think that format, uh, uh, you know, was people started saying, well, I think we know this format too well now. So I think that elbowed, uh, uh, you know, some room for T20. Now, what is this T20? I think this is exactly suiting the requirement of the current day professionals. Starts at eight in the evening, finishes at eleven. So you don't have to really, uh, you know, uh, bunk your office or whatever to come and watch the match. Although you people work twenty-four by seven, most of you. Um, you know, what happens now? Uh, there is enough people to sponsor the game as well. So all formats are surviving now. It's the T20s, it's the ODIs, and even the test matches, all of it are surviving. And there is enough money. First of all, you need money to really run these kind of formats and to make it successful. And I think what has happened now is that it's a, T20 is a, is a bag of uh, entertainment, uh, is a mix of, uh, you know, a little bit of cricket as well in it, <laughs> and, and, and all put together. And it is well packaged. It's well packaged. I mean, just imagine, um, if there are no cheerleaders, I think uh, there will be a 20 percent dropout. Um, so no, all these things are put together and made it a wonderful package for, for people. So it has also drawn new audience to watch this game. So you have a result very quickly. The game has changed. I think it has empowered batsmen tremendously uh, and unfairly. Bowlers have gone for a toss. Uh, they are struggling in this format, for sure. Uh, I know recently somebody asked me, you know, you know, how does the bowler wants to come back into this game in this, you know, it's, very been, it's been very harsh for the bowlers. I said, the only way the bowler can come back into this game is by batting. <laughs> so, it's, <coughs> so it's becoming a little one-sided. I think there needs to be change in the rules, regulations, and that will happen in the due course of time. We use the T20 format to essentially entice clients to come over to India and say that, come over for our Indian version of baseball. Right? Make them fly all over and then sell them some IT and BPM as well. And then spend the three hours with them. It works very well for our business. Yeah. <laughs> the ticket sales are very high then. So you remember that ball after your debut where you got Keith Atherton out, right? They call it uh, that wonder ball and stuff like that. Talk a little bit about that ball and also any other kind of delivery of yours that you are Honestly, if I go a little deeper and then give you a, you know, frame by frame version of that particular ball, I would be lying. I just bowled, he got bowled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think much. I don't want to be putting stories around that ball. And, and when I saw that ball, I was like, wow. Did you think? <laughs> so we, so for, uh, fortunately, we're not having Warney here. If he had the same answer to that ball that bowled that guy out, you know, getting, mm -hmm. uh, it, would be, it would change the history of cricket. But, you know, you should pick, a, pick up a really good answer for this one now. Yeah. Make it full of masala and all oh. that stuff, like a Hindi movie. <laughs> anyway, as a commentator, uh, you know, and an IC, ICC match referee, you're now sitting on the other side of the boundary. Give us a sense of how that feels now. I think commentary was a very small stint. Um, I think you can always come back to commentary a little later with more experience and better language. You can always, you know, the point in India is that when you get into commentary, you're just pushed into it. So there are a lot of, um, you know, in commentary, you've got to learn something. Whereas if you go to Sky or, uh, you know, other channels, I think they, they breed you into, they, they lead you into the commentary. They give you proper training for a month. And so in India, it is just like, okay, now you finish cricket, go and do commentary. Now, 
that doesn't work sometimes, but you've got to be prepared. I said, I, I strongly feel that even for commentary, you need some kind of preparation. Yeah, that's about commentary. You can always come back to commentary a little later. So you, as long as your voice is strong and loud and clear, so you should be able to do that. But I think I, I wanted to be much closer to the game. So match refereeing is, is, is a very good profession. Um, you're on top of the players. Um, you basically, my job is to make sure that both the team conducts, um, which is aligning to the spirit of the game. Um, and then um, the umpires are doing their job. The process, the protocols are followed by the umpires. Whatever that you saw, the clipping. So he has to go one after the other. Now whether he's following everything is important because with technology, you cannot afford to make any mistakes. So these are the, uh, and then again, relationship between uh, the host association, whether they're providing the basic minimum requirements, what we do, the security arrangements, is it in place for us? Um, the relationship between the umpires and players can get little um, tight at times and we've got to interfere and then give them the right picture. Umpires do make mistakes that can really upset the players. So they come running into our dressing rooms to ask why the decision was wrong. So you've got to you know, calm them down and give them a good answer on why that decision was made. So when it is 50-50, both the teams feel, one of the teams will feel that, look, I think I've been undone by this decision. So you've got to sell them you know, what is right and how, what is consistency all about. And even if technology fails at times, you've got to stand up and answer. So, you know, you've got to be a little sharp, um, no doubt about it. You, I mean, then they, you know, at times, uh, even the um, interpretation of the laws can be challenged. Uh, you should be able to um, interpret the laws and give the right definition. At that point in time, you might be right or wrong, is not that if, uh, but is it aligning to the spirit of the game then? And also, is it for the game? So you've got to keep all these things in mind. So it's a, a very holistic, more responsible job. If the wicket is not really good, then ultimately it comes to us to say this pitch is not fit enough to play. So it's a little responsible job at times. And uh, yeah, basically we, we defend umpires quite a bit in this game. Not a very relaxing profession. <laughs> so if any of you are planning to become a referee, don't think so much about it. Let him do it. <laughs> now a beamer, okay, mm -hmm. to, to you. That no, I went frame by frame, so <laughs> it was all true. <laughs> no, so that, that you know, Anil Kumble's 10 for 74 yeah. against Pakistan at Firoz uh, Kotla. Everyone said that you saw that your friend could have taken all 10 wickets, so you started bowling, you know, wide of the wicket a little bit, right? First of all, is that true? And that allowed him to get the 10 wickets, right? Well, I mean, if somebody is on the ninth wicket, uh, why you did your allow friend him? come before the team? That's the beam, that's the beamer. Oh, well, I think that's a good question, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, what happened the very next day, it rained. So there was no game in case if I had bowled all those wides and, um, I mean, now, you know, as a match referee, I mean, I, I cannot bowl, I mean, nobody can bowl wide left, right and center. It gives a different meaning altogether. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But no, you had to wear a towel for that. I think the way he was bowling, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, which side of the towel, that's the point, yeah. Which, um, no, I think, uh, Somebody is there at, you know, nine wickets, so you, you definitely accommodate. You know, you need to celebrate such success. I mean, winning the test match was one thing, but I think somebody taking ten wickets was marvelous on that particular uh, uh, test match. And, and to be part of that feat, I think, uh, how can I be inclusive of that particular celebration is by not taking that wicket. So, <laughs> it was... It was hard to bowl those whites, and uh, we decided that, okay, for two overs, we'll, we will probably try and see, um, you know, not to take wickets, because spinners, there is a good chance that he might, the, the batsman doesn't want him to give 10 wickets. So they would probably just uh, hit out and, you know, make a mess of it. So I was, I was ready to bowl wide outside the off stem to make sure that, you know, he doesn't get out. I th although there was one catch which went to Ramesh in the deep fine leg, uh, the deep square leg. So we shouted, don't take that catch. <laughs> <laughs> and Anil, uh, you know, to what he is, I think, uh, took the next wicket very quickly. That was Wazim Akram, I think, and um, folded the match for us. But seriously, you are, you are a hero for the entire country for that also, because there also, it must have been a very calculated risk that he took with the entire team. And it all worked out well. And finally, they say, Jo Jita, wo hi Sikandar. Ah. Right? So, no, when it happens well, it's perfect. An so, Anil tells well me done. that, you know, I have got the 10 wickets, but wherever I go, they talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, that matters. 
So Jeff, Jeff Thompson used to say when he bowled and when he hurt the batsmen and he saw them, you know, falling down, agonized in pain, he enjoyed it immensely. On the other hand, one has rarely seen you come down the pitch, in spite of all those wickets, staring at batsmen and abusing them, except for that one time where you were actually inquiring about the, you know, well-being of Fleming and, who, and he thought you were abusing him, right? So tell us a little bit about that and also Look, uh, the spirit of the game when you played it and whether you're seeing any change in it now. I think television, um, you know, makes people do many things. I mean, many things that we see on the street is all because of the news channels and televisions. You know, you put the television, people will do anything for the television to get that little footage. I think it happens on cricket as well. I think a lot of people do crazy things to get noticed on television. And aggression is one part of it. You know, commentators get something to speak about it. And then you make some faces, you save some words, uh, which is not necessary. You make some gestures. Now, some people get addicted to that. They keep doing it every now and then, which is not probably correct. I mean, that's not the way I have played my cricket throughout my career. Uh, it could be Anil, it could be Rahul, it could be anybody for that matter. I think we don't believe in that kind of <laughs> aggression. Aggression is different. I mean, uh, the way you want to get a wicket, the way you want to score runs, the way you want to be aggressive is more in the way you, your core functioning, uh, uh, you know, the, your happens instead of saying words and stuff. I think that's, you know, yeah, I mean, you express little frustrations every now and then, um, uh, but not really, uh, you know, using bad words or gestures. I don't know whether it is, which is required, and I'm completely against it, and therefore I'm a match referee. A man, <laughs> man of high values and, and, you know, high ethics and high integrity. We salute you. So in 2000, you know, Justin Langer spoke about that match where he struggled for the first 47 runs, then he suddenly played exceedingly well to get to 150, and thereafter when you got the new ball, he struggled all over again, right? So tell us a little bit about that, because, you know, when you were bowling in that second, uh, in that second spell, there were a number of no balls that were bowled to which he got out. You even, you got him bowled in one of the no balls, in fact, and number of LBW appeals were turned down, and you told him, let's go, why don't you go and buy a lottery ticket, right? <laughs> because today is your lucky day. What was the response and uh, how much do you think that luck plays a role in life as in business? I, I really, you know, when people say that you're lucky, I think it's a very loosely worded uh, sentence, I suppose. I think you can't be lucky. I mean, if somebody said that, you know, he's lucky, therefore he's playing cricket, uh, I don't believe that. If somebody says Sachin is lucky to be a good player, no. It is the way he has connected to the game right from the word go. It's the conviction about his talent uh, all throughout his life, how firmly he has practiced um, uh, throughout his career, and the way you think about um, that particular game at all stages of your life makes you who you are. I think luck, I don't know, I mean, if all this, luck is something, I would only, if there's an accident that happens on the road, that's the luck, because it is not your fault. I think that's, that's the bad luck that you can go through, but I think, Talent over a period of time cannot be attributed to luck. That's unfair. Uh, I think it is, it is your traits which are not seen outside, which is your personality which is not seen outside. It is how much conviction and passion you have for the game. I think that makes you what you are instead of attributing everything to luck. I think luck is just a word to say, well, I mean, if somebody takes a brilliant catch, it is not luck, it is the anticipation. Now, how much of practice that he has done right from his childhood days, that comes out beautifully on that particular day where his reflexes takes over and then he picks up that catch. So, luck cannot be, I mean, so it, it, is, it is, I think there is a tradition for your practice and there is a history for your practice and therefore you are good. I'm sure all of you, nobody is lucky enough to be here. I think you have worked your, put your miles behind before you came here to. <coughs> so it's just a word to say, luck, but I firmly don't believe in that. Fantastic answer. And you know, when some of our companies grow faster than the NASCOM <laughs> growth rate, nothing to do with luck. It is good <laughs> execution of business strategy. So you know, they say people should retire when 
you know, others say, why and why not? You retired when people were all saying, why? But we also have examples across the world, we won't name people, where people are saying, why is this person not retiring? When should a person retire? Not just in sport, business as well. We have CEOs who just hold on to the chair. Okay, I mean, um, when, when, you know, you set a standard for yourself. Now, I think your peers are the best judge of yours. I always believe that I need to ask Anil Rahul or, or Sachin or Saurav, uh, not Saurav really, but the uh, <laughs> rest of the guys, to, to get a sense of where I stand honestly in my own profession. And if these guys are with you, you don't need a selector. These are the guys who will pick you in the side or you pick yourself when you have an order. I mean, it's similar to Anil, it's similar to Rahul. I mean, what, I mean we, we used to have a lot of discussion about where my career stands and where Rahul's career stands, whether he should keep wickets or not uh, to be part of the uh, World Cup, uh, you know, without keeping wickets, what's his stake, uh, you know, all these things we discuss. And I think when you are a senior in the side and, and if you're honest about your peer, that's the best feedback, that's the best advice that you can get. You don't have to look for somebody, a selector doesn't interact with you. A selector has nothing to do with you. All he sees is you playing, all he sees is, uh, is that you playing on the television or if he's on the ground, he'll watch you and then he'll make a decision on the numbers you get. But I think it is just not the numbers. I think it is about the way you interact with people, though how you contribute otherwise, how much effort uh, you know, you put in to, to you, you are putting into this uh, business to really do, uh, you know, do well. I'm talking about form and out of form, you see. I mean, we all talk in the newspapers, we, oh, he's out of form. And form, what does that mean actually? When you grow, I mean, in, in, when, uh, this can probably apply to your business as well. You know, when you're 26, 25, your reflexes, you're physically getting stronger and stronger up until the age of 28, 29, you can be very strong, you can grow into a strong individual, physically, mentally. Your skill sets, what you have at the age of 23, changes at the age of 26. Number one, you become predictable for others. And number two is that your body is changing, your thinking is changing. Obviously, your line length, everything will start changing. You've got to add more uh, uh, you know, a variety into your bowling or into your batting. People will sort you out. So you've got to escape that and then come up with something new. When you do this transition from your, got to unlearn the talent, what you have, and then come up with this new talent, that takes time. That's the time where you struggle. You will probably end up making mistakes. You will end up making, uh, giving, you know, getting out or as a bowler, I think you will probably bowl too many balls down the legs. You're trying something. You're getting into the next level of your learnings. Now, in this period, you go out of form. Now, what saves you there is your human side. How good you were when you were doing well. How did you share your knowledge and information with your teammates? Are you good to him when he's not doing well? All these things, your human values matter a lot at that particular point in time. When you are a good human being, you get a long uh, rope in the side. They say, hold on, I think he's a good guy. He should be, he's trying his level best. Let's give him some more time. That comes from within the team. And even if a selector says that he doesn't want to be in the side, the captain or the senior says, hold on, he should be in the side, he's a good player. If your values are eroded, if you're not that human being what you're supposed to be and if you go into a lean patch, the first thing is get somebody else, let's see what he does. This is what happens between form and out of form. If you see a lot of people who get out of the teams and, and basically, and need not, you need not be harsh, but how, you know, how team oriented you are also matters a lot. If you're about yourself all the time, it reflects very quickly. It propagates very quickly among the team members. So as long as you don't, you don't play your own cricket, but you also help somebody in whichever way you can, even if you're a junior, senior, doesn't matter. I think your attitude counts a lot. And I think, you know, subconsciously, I think we are recording somebody else's atti attitude when you play the game. So you, it is not that easy to say, okay, uh, let me hold on to this player. No, you wouldn't say that. There is enough data which you don't even know, which is assimilated in yourself already. That's how we get the support of the peers. 
fascinating it's that was that was a ceo that was a ceo talking at a management appraisal discussion about some senior person who was not done very well that particular year right it was exactly the kind of discussion so for all our rock stars uh, javagal we have a rapid fire round also 10 seconds you have to respond and if you don't you have a problem okay right so questions very quickly favorite ground lords or chenna swami uh, say chenna swami more emotional good favorite batsman <coughs> sachin or dravid uh, i would go for sachin okay rahul is a good friend he will manage <laughs> <laughs> he will tolerate he will tolerate and he has to tolerate <laughs> <laughs> who do you prefer to see in the mirror uh, javagal with or without the mustache <laughs> i said prefer <laughs> well, i mean you are rapid fire right i think without i think good <laughs> your all time favorite sportsman uh, change from uh, pete sampras to federer Tennis, <laughs> wonderful. First five overs or last five overs bowling, which is more difficult? First five overs. If the ball is reversing, last five overs. So you have both. <laughs> If not cricket, what other sport? Ah, that's a big question. I mean, I never played any other sport actually. Uh, I, I don't have an answer for this, so I give up. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so you're human. So Steve Waugh had that red handkerchief. Sachin ha- wear his left pad first. What was your, what was your thing? Right shoe first all the time. Right shoe. Right shoe. And didn't touch the crease and all that stuff. No, you, no, no, no. Not no, that no. Akbar kind of story no, which you no. were telling me inside. No, okay, no, no. okay. You have a weak spot for what? <laughs> Now there, is, there was a nice clipping from Jardy Tata. You. Uh, Tata, have you have any yeah, seen yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen it, but you can't give that answer. No, no. <laughs> He already gave it. <laughs> My weak spot is what? Ooh. Is my? I don't know. And I'm sure I have a lot of weaknesses like anybody He's else. He's human, guys. He's human. <laughs> yeah, my my weak my weakness is uh, if somebody is bowling very fast, I'm weak. <laughs> I don't know. I. I thought you would say laddu. Oh, I see. No, no, no. That's not. That's those are all the strong points, actually. <laughs> Eating is a very strong point, actually. No, my weakness. You are asking my weakness, is it? Yeah, any weak point. Yeah. Well, I think my weak point would be. Um, I think my extreme humbleness. Good. That's a great answer. And changing, I think. That could be my. So. So, following up on that, a trait you wish you had. Um, probably um, skills to learn better. Probably I could have understood the world better at my early stage of my life. Fantastic. That's that's the thing. I mean, the experience what I gained was I always felt I was lagging behind, and I could have learned things better. Maybe um, I didn't think enough to. Get better then. In swinger, out swinger, or reverse swing, your favorite? When you say reverse swing, it has to be in swinger, in swinger or reverse swing. Either of the two, I'll take any one of them. Very good. You know, Javagal has done exceedingly well as of now, but we still have time for two <coughs> questions from the audience, right? Please, first one for you. You use the mic, please. Use the mic, please. his action after you started international cricket was it because of a technology intervention or was it something uh, <laughs> there was no technology then um yeah i think your action do undergo a change but i made a conscious change in south africa itself um where i felt a little more comfortable and i think i i added a yard pace with that one so i was looking for pace and i think that particular action gave me a uh, bit more whippy uh, stuff into my bowling so therefore uh, i changed my action a little early in my career whether it's good for bad i don't know maybe if i had not changed my action i would have got another 200 wickets but i believe in myself so at least i got those whatever wickets i got 
<laughs> Had I not changed, I would not have got even 100 wickets. That is also a possibility. Great answer. Yes, gentleman at the back. Yeah. Yeah, 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 please. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Srinath, uh, great speech. Uh, just two questions, actually. Uh, one pertaining to the 92 World Cup, India, Australia. What went through your mind on the last ball with Tom Modi bowled to you? I think you should and, ask Venkatapati Raju. Yeah, and, and what did you tell Venkatapati Raju after the game? And the second question this is. This is a very decent audience. Unparliamentary words are not to be used. <laughs> So <laughs> uh, basically, he thought it was a sixer. Yeah, I know. And, In fact, Tony uh, Greg thought it was a sixer too. His, his, his first words were, oh my God, it's a six. No, <laughs> Steve was under it. And, and he dropped Steve it. dropped it. Yeah, so a lot of things happened. And then Venkat Pati was celebrating. celebrating around me. And I had to tell him, you run <laughs> with ex explicit words. But by then, it was too late. And <laughs> my one stride is his, his two strides. So <laughs> basically... <laughs> He was stranded well beyond the crease. So and, and the second question was 2003 World Cup final. What was going through your mind when Saurabh said <coughs> we are bowling first? Well, I think there was a disagreement on that one. Uh, it was, I mean, I, I, I completely take responsibility for not performing well on that particular day. There's nothing wrong. I think you makes it lighter when you say that I, I put my hand up by the end of the match and I said, sorry, guys, I let you guys down. Uh, there's nothing wrong. I think you win by saying such things. Yeah. I think uh, there is no need to be, there's no need to hide your failures. I think, I think that's one way, uh, you know, to kind of handle failures is to put up your hand and be first to say that, look, I didn't do well today. Um, one, one last question from here. But answering yeah. that, I think there was a bit of a say, thing saying that it's the last match, you know, put them under pressure. Let's bat first. Even if you score 150, there is a lot of pressure on the batsman. We did that, but now I cannot take that as an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Srinath, hi. Lovely speech. Um, so I had a similar question like that. So 96 quarterfinal, uh, when uh, Venkatesh Prasad bowled Amir Sohail. So what was the kind of emotions that the team exactly went through on the ground? Well, we let Venkatesh say whatever he wanted to say. <laughs> And I think some of us felt that it was too less. <laughs> uh, we just wanted uh, him to do anything he wanted. But yeah, I mean, as long as he's doing, I'm fine. I mean, I've, uh, but Venkatesh is a very aggressive guy. Um, if you look, if you re-engineer his background and then what he is, is two different things actually. He's a very timid uh, uh, vegetarian, I would say. Um, you know, who has probably. Uh, done well with just rice and sambar also <laughs> throughout his life. But uh, I think, uh, you know, he stood up to the challenge. And I think that I, from the match referee's point of view, I think he would have been booked, he would have been charged. But I think from a very, if I think like a player, I think that response was perfect. I think it was a very adequate response what he got. I think uh, he just said what he wanted to say and I think uh, he deserved it as well. Ladies and gentlemen. No, no, we're done now. He has to go and we have a few other things to finish. So this has been a fascinating discussion with the Mysuru Express, with the gentleman cricketer. And let me tell you, you know, Javagal, here at this summit and at this forum, you know, you are our hero. Okay? Thank you very much. We, we give awards to our top customers. We call them BPM pioneers. Without being our customer, we have given you an honorary award. Wow. You are a NASCOM BPM awardee. Thank you very, very much. well done, very well Thank done. You. Stay on the stage for the minute. Standing ovation stage. I'm totally speechless. Thank you so much, Javagal. Uh, Keshav Javagal, you guys are not done yet. We have, uh, we had a lucky draw by two of our uh, sponsor companies, Nice and Cisco. We'd be very honored if you could present the uh, winners their gift. So may I call upon on stage Sandeep Sharma from Nice. Nice. He's the MD of uh, South uh, Middle East and South Asia. Sandeep, if you could come on stage. Come, 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 come. You can come on stage.
your your price that you will give to the uh, you know, auction house. <laughs> All right, Sandeep, if you could do the honors. Uh, do we have Ajay Gulia of Ages? Do we have him? Really? He's lost out on a great prize, I must say. Next <laughs> Sandeep, one. Next, one. next person. All right. Somebody's. Winning something, Tanmay Agarwal of Genpak, are you here? Is here? Where are you? Come upon. Javakal, if you can do the honors. Tanmay, if you come on stage, please, and congratulations. Wow. Yeah, it's an eye watch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Tanmay. Okay, we no front faces. We have another prize also to be won. Can I call upon on stage Mukund and Sandeep from Cisco? If you could come on stage, please. Whew. Who's the next winner? Who would be doing the honors? Again, Sandeep doing honors. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sandeep, you could do the honors. Okay. Shamit Mukherjee from PWC, are you here? Shamit is losing out on something very, very important. We will deliver it to him. We will let, let luck chase him for the first time. Really? You're going to do that? Yeah, we're going to deliver. Oh, that is, that, is, that is very sweet. So you're going to deliver it to Shamit? All right. Okay, so that's very sweet of Cisco. I thought I had the chance to win, but uh, too bad. But thank you so much. Thank you.